The image of Birmingham during the Industrial Revolution of the 18th and 19th centuries is not usually quiet men such as this, delicately adding beauty to small objects with infinite care and skill. Instead, we seem to feel the heat of glowing forges, hear the deafening hammering from anvils, and smell the smoke belching from a thousand chimneys. Yet this stereotyped image is only a single fragment of a city of a thousand trades, where skilled artisans worked in family-owned and family-run workshops, which did not bash metal, but proudly made works such as this. Today, here in the city's thriving jewellery quarter, these same skills and artistry are still world-renowned. So it's appropriate that the Royal Birmingham Society of Artists the organisation which has long nurtured art in the city and which still provides its artists with a critically important showcase is also found here. The RBSA grew out of drawing schools that were established in Birmingham in the 18th and 19th century, mainly to train young artisan artists to work in industry. And of course, many of those uh, young artists and their teachers began to develop an ambition to become more professional in their practice. Their first exhibition was held in 1814 and was mainly landscape paintings. In 1821, the society moved into the circular panorama building in the centre of Birmingham. In 1829, a Corinthian columned gallery opened in New Street. Some of the finest artists of the time exhibited here and royal patronage was granted. During the 1850s, the society was attracting attention from uh, artists all over the UK, and that included some of the revolutionary ones like the Pre-Raphaelites, who started exhibiting in Birmingham in 1852. And that indicates the credibility and the status of the society during that period. This golden era came to an abrupt end in 1912, at a time when recession and declining sales forced the RBSA to relocate. The splendid gallery was replaced by leased premises above street level in New Street, in which the society operated for more than 80 years. However, exhibitions continued to attract excellent work. Through these paintings, we can trace the RBSA's history. Let's start with David Cox, really beautiful work. Yes, um, it's thought to depict uh, the countryside near uh, Harborne, which is where he settled when he came back to Birmingham in 1841. The picture shows a family observing um, a skylark that's uh, sort of twittering in the sky. And Cox is able to capture that fantastic sensation of sound in landscape, uh, the sound of the bird and the sound of the breeze rustling through those oak trees. This wonderful kind of sensational picture. This is the portrait of Edward Taylor. Edward Taylor was the first headmaster of the new municipally funded School of Art in mm -hmm. Margaret Street. Yeah. And he's a very unacknowledged figure, I think, in the history of art and design and also art education. He introduced a whole new system of art teaching at the Birmingham School of Art, which enabled students to actually make the objects that they were designing at art school mm -hmm. rather than just producing drawings. And that was really That's new, right. wasn't it? Yeah, it was a revolutionary method of, um, of teaching art and design that attracted attention from all over the world. Birmingham was seen as a, a, for, a forefront of practical art education. There was a very, very close relationship between the School of Art and the RBSA, which was seen as the main showcase for applied art and fine art in the city during the 1870s and 1880s. Joseph Southall, perhaps one of the most famous of the Birmingham artists from the late 19th, early 20th century. Mm -hmm. Southall and his friends, like Arthur Gaskin, were seen as the national leaders in the revival of the tempera technique. Tempera relies on egg yolk as its binding medium. It gave you a lovely uniformity of matte finish, a fabulous surface quality and an intensity of saturated colour that reminded people of the great paintings of the early Italian masters from the 14th century. 
And this shows the old portico, doesn't it, of the RBSA? So this is important in the building's That's history, right. institution's history. The old portico was a great landmark in Birmingham. It stood on New Street, towards the top end of New Street, and um, was the headquarters of the Birmingham Society of Arts for many, many years, from 1829, right away um, until it was finally demolished in 1913. And this painting is, uh, if you like, Southall's memorial to that great building. It shows a busy street scene, and t typically Southall has included some wonderful little bits of street life, and particularly the fashionable ladies. Kate Bunce was also associated in the Tempera revival with Joseph Southall, they were friends. And she's really one of the artists from the Birmingham group that brought pre-Raphaelitism, those later stages of pre-Raphaelitism, to Birmingham art. Also tied in with the arts and crafts movement as well. And I think you can really see that in this work, which is one of several that she painted around this time. And I love the level of decorative detail mm. in this work, this fabulous floor design on this dress, which is just like a William Morris yes. fabric. And I think Kate Bunce, just like Gaskin and Southall are really of their time capturing this sort of fusion of the pre-Raphaelites and the arts and crafts in the city. And that decorative richness can really be seen in this work. It's a very old fashioned picture for the turn of the century, but this atmosphere of, um, of reverence for the arts and crafts ideology and for the pre-Raphaelites persists in Birmingham way after it starts to decline in, in other cities and around the country. This portrait by Theresa Clark from around 1950 can tell us quite a lot about what was happening in portraiture in Birmingham at the time, but also what was happening in the national art trends at the time as well, can't it? It's very optimistic work, I think. Yes, and it's uh, characteristic of post-war British portrait painting, and particularly of, of uh, images of children like this, to portray them in a very optimistic, kind of forward-looking way. And this portrait of this young woman certainly fits that bill. It's, it's very bright, very sunny. One feels as though it's looking towards the future of Britain rather than dwelling on the past. And Theresa Clark was a very important artist in the history of the RBSA as well, wasn't she? Yes, she was, because she was elected the first female full member of the RBSA in 1952. It corresponded with the um, uh, accession of Queen Elizabeth II. And the society seemed to be responding to that event by deciding at last to elect a full uh, member who was a female. And uh, Theresa went on to become a, a great supporter of the society. Also in the exhibition we have this very enigmatic, uh, mysterious work by Trevor Denning. And I think it shows Birmingham and art and almost the shock of the new with modern art and people's reactions to it. I think that's a fair statement. It's not that often that uh, we, we get uh, images of gallery goers and visitors um, being the main subject of a picture. And here we have a, a gentleman, I suppose he's a, you'd call him a ranter. He's, <laughs> he's ranting at what he's seeing on the walls. And he's accompanied by a rather serious looking lady with a, a lorgnette. Um, in the background is this rather enigmatic gentleman um, sort of stroking his chin, almost kind of looking to see which way the wind is blowing. The exhibition that they're attending is ostensibly an exhibition of work by Trevor Denning himself. <laughs> so we see the pictures displayed in the background on the rather sadly peeling walls of the RBSA gallery in New Street. In 2000, the RBSA entered an exciting new phase in its history when it purchased these premises here in the city's thriving jewellery quarter. It organises about 60 exhibitions a year and provides a gallery for local artists to show and sell their work. There are also more than 140 educational programmes each year. So what does this mean for artists today? For me, it was a, a tremendous help uh, when I wanted to become a professional artist and migrate from being essentially an amateur to uh, a professional. And uh, the help and the support of the people within the society was completely invaluable. 
the RBSA represents a real opportunity because we have lots of open exhibitions which are aimed at encouraging you know new talent younger people particularly because it is a struggle it's a great struggle especially in the early years when you're trying to find your way and this is what the RBSA represents to me opportunities for the development of the talent in this area. For more than 200 years, the Royal Birmingham Society of Artists has reflected the artistic life of the city. It has constantly proved that there is more to Birmingham than industry and innovation alone. Art is and always has been at the centre of the city's life and there is no better place to discover the artists of the future as well as exploring those of the past than here at the RBSA.